I can't wait to see how Corey will style his hair. Well, don't worry. I never style my hair. You get a hat, or you get a shower, or you get random. And so, you've pretty much gotten all those but a hat today. What's up, everybody? It's Wednesday. We're talking about fish and fish-related stuff. Could go on a tangent. Likely that we will talk about other stuff, because that's what I do. Today, it was brought to my attention with talking with my trainer and social media that people don't know who I am. And how I got there was, it used to be on YouTube and social media platforms, if there was a big following, there was some authenticity and some street cred there. But with the invention of TikTok and shorts and things like that, that doesn't exist in the same manner. You could have a million followers and be telling lies the whole time and other stuff. And so, especially lately with the whole meta of make something clearly wrong so that people will be outraged and then leave comments and fuel the algorithm. So in a day and age where that's rewarded on the platforms, how would people... If someone was brand new, let's say this is your first time ever seeing me, how would you know anything I'm about to say or have said so far has any weight? You wouldn't. And so I'm going to develop a way to uh, hopefully illustrate that in our videos, not just for me, but other people we have working. We have people that have very advanced careers and skill sets delivering videos and messages and stuff like that, and people don't know. So my background, in case you don't know, I've worked in a fish store like 15 years. I've been in the hobby for about 20-ish. And uh, I own Aquarium Co-op, which is a retail store. It's also an online entity as well, both in YouTube and as a big warehouse. We've got about 25 employees. Um, I'm a master aquatic horticulturist, so plant nerd. I've bred a lot of fish. I ran the breeder award program for the Greater Seattle Aquarium Society for a few years. And I've spent a lot of my time touring the world trying to learn about aquariums, fish tanks, retail store businesses, both aquatic and non. Uh, some of the places I've been, I've been to Peru, been to lots of different European countries, been to Israel, I've been to um, Japan, China. I also work in manufacturing. So we actually not, not, we don't, we don't just go, Hey, that's a phone. We could put our name on that. We should do that. We go, Hey, that's a phone. And these are the things I hate. Can we fix that and change it and work with it for years and try to make it better? And then we might end up with an air pump. So we do that too. And these are all the things that have led to my experience on when someone goes, hey, schooling fish stocking ideas or breeding idea for a 10-gallon planet tank. How is there any weight to that? Right? Because anybody can answer that question. Right? The next person behind you, if you're driving right now, or your person sitting at work next to you could answer that. Could be right, could be wrong, but they could give an answer. So hopefully the context of who I am and what I've done will give some credibility to some of the answers. Not that my answers are always right, because that's not true, but you might see the point of view of where I'm coming from. All right. So 10-gallon aquariums. I have bred fish in 10-gallon aquariums. I've bred lots of guppies and uh, cherry shrimps and things like that for profit. That's a whole series we've done in the past. We slowly update it. We write articles about it, too. Uh, there are a lot of fish, especially since Nano became popular in the early 2000s that fit that. We've got lots of lists. Go to the Advice Center. You can see that. And uh, what I would say is I, wa I saw it today in Facebook in our group, which we have a group with, you know, like 50,000 people. And someone was complaining about the electricity bill in, I think it was San Diego. And people kept trying. Their, their goal was they wanted to breed fish for profit. 
and they couldn't because it's 85 cents a kilowatt or whatever, something like that. And uh, they were kind of just, they're, they're doing that social media thing I hate where you say, here's my problem. Someone presents a totally valid answer to that problem. And then the person comes back with, yeah, but, and then you go, okay, well, how about this? Assault? Yeah, but, right? And so this person, uh, they were worried about the power bill and you could go into like, well, breed more expensive fish, that kind of stuff. But someone suggested just breeding fish outside, get free sunlight and all that. And they said, yeah, but I have raccoons and possums and other stuff to eat it, right? And so then I chime in, I go, well, you know, there's lots of ways to make that work. Use screen material, greenhouse panels, old windows from Craigslist. And I kind of went into this little couple paragraph thing that says, in business, which breeding fish for profit is a business, it is your job to find a way to make things work and make it be profitable. That is what business is. You take an idea and you need to make it work. If you just accept the reality or the result that you get, you're, you're likely to go out of business. And so being that I have done that, I knew, yeah, you build tops. I've got raccoons. I've got possums. I've got these things. And there are always challenges. But in order to receive a reward, which is money, you need to overcome some challenge. Otherwise, everybody would be doing it. And I actually broke it down in that post. And I said, uh... I actually don't believe that energy or the money that it takes to make the fish is the problem people have. I actually think it's time. So when 20 years ago, when I was breeding fish for profit, my time, if I went to work, was about $12 an hour. Now, if I'm sitting in on high level meetings and I've got lawyers in the room and we're paying them $500 each, my time might be several thousands of dollars per hour. It does not make the same amount of sense as it did 20 years ago for me to breed guppies as it does today. Now, I enjoy it probably more today than I did back then. Back then, breed guppies, buy a cup of noodle, go to the store, eat a cup of noodle, pray someone comes in and buys something. Nowadays, breed guppies could buy a cup of noodle, but I can afford a cup of noodle. So instead, it's breed guppies have fun. And so that's much more rewarding. But... The person that needs to breed the cup of noodle or breed the guppies to make a cup of noodle has to compete with me and I'm just doing it for fun and there's a lot of hobbyists that are doing it for the fun and that's where you really are going to have to scale and figure out some things to compete with someone who needs to make the money. So I think time is the biggest hurdle to breeding fish for profit and I laid out some examples, you know, there's 20 year ago me, there's now me, what if I had a kid? Do I have time then? What if my kid was into it? Oh, now I do have time. You know, there's different things that change in your life that will have different demands on your time. So, you know, if, heaven forbid, my, my grandma passed away, I'd get Sundays back, right? Because I wouldn't go have dinner with grandma. I'd have more time. So there's always going to be those things when it comes to just like power and water and things that are used to breed a fish for profit. Those are kind of always constant. There's going to be costs in business and you'll have to pay them and you'll have to sell for more than it costs. Hey, Corey, just got to France at 1 a.m. and finally caught a live stream. How often should I maintenance a 100-gallon aquarium for my service business? It really depends on the setup. I tried to set up all my clients for one time a month. That's because I felt they got the most value out of it. Um, interesting you're in France. Zenzo just arrived in France. Uh, I believe he's there. Yeah, read the cup of noodle. <laughs> I've been there. Sometimes you got to stretch that cup of noodle. When you're, we were eating a lot of cup of noodles and I had my first employee and they enjoyed them as well. We were bringing in freeze dried garlic and other things trying to spice it up. But, uh, that's the humble beginnings of, you know, many days where, eating out of a cup of noodle and trying any, you know, okay, maybe a little bit of, put a little bit of soy sauce in this, maybe put some, you know, trying to dress it up so it's not day 14 in a row of like, yep, it's a cup of noodle, that's my lunch, and not healthy, not good for you, but, you know, that's how the store started. Someone asked how that workouts was working, am I losing weight? Not really. Uh... Losing a little bit of weight, but muscle mass, way stronger than I've ever been. Way more capable, flexible. Um, pretty much everything we do is like on a BOSU ball, so uneven surfaces. And 
in that and I have to keep buying larger weights, so clearly it's working, but uh, in terms of, I, I'm I'm like 80% convinced that even though we track food, and we, we've done a bunch of things like, okay, how does Corey lose weight? And and I'm, I know the internet's on the other side of this camera, and the internet goes, well, this works for me, and here's what you should be doing. I, I get it. I work with professionals also, you know, so it's not just, you know, I'm not just random guy on the internet saying things aren't working, and I don't want to be the guy going, yeah, but, yeah, but. Um, I honestly think it's stress. Just from day-to-day -day work, there's always more things, whether it's HR issues, financial issues, product issues. Uh, like right now, a couple hours ago, my, my business partner is in the ER. So tonight and tomorrow, I have to do a couple of airport runs. I have to make a delivery to the retail store, because that's what he'd be doing. I have a cargo container arriving on Friday that he was going to handle, but now that's in my lap. Um, so it's just stuff like that. It's, it's nothing, there's no one event, but my job being at the top tends to be fairly stressful. And I find that when I travel or go on vacation, I lose weight. When I can go, hey, I'm out of town for three weeks, I'm in Europe, or I'm in on vacation or something, I'll lose weight because the stress goes away. Someone else is now at the top of the, the food chain handling those requests. So... That's what I've seen so far, and short of me just going, hey, guess what, I'm retiring, uh, every day I work a little bit more to getting more off my plate. <sighs> Any updates on coming down to Australia? Nope, none yet. I, I, In fact, I canceled my European trip. I'm really trying to focus on just home life and balance and, and things like that, and part of that's even making sure I drink broth, you know, what, what you guys don't see is whether I'm in meetings or shooting video or live stream, which you do see this, uh, there's a lot of other times during the week my voice gives out and it's just from, you know, sometimes like today there is meetings and I had to train and but I've been talking most of the day and then I will do this and then at some point uh, tonight, you know, Katie, it's date night so we'll talk more and then my voice will just start giving out and it'll start being you know, kind of grumbly, and then tomorrow there's a toll too, so, you know, trying to be better about more hydration and just doing stuff to keep, uh, you know, the vocal cords working. Browning Fawn says, stress eating? I wish, I wish it was that easy. I actually had a gastric bypass surgery when I was younger, which made me lose a bunch of weight. And uh, I held it off for a long time, basically until I opened the store, really. Um, and so on average, I consume mm, somewhere between like 1,100 and 1,600 calories a day, which for someone at my BMI is really low. And uh, yeah, and so it's, uh, no one knows. I've had blood work done, lots of professionals kind of working on it, and we're all trying to see, but... The one common theme is stress, not losing weight. Body's in stress mode. You start relaxing, hey, what do you know? Corey's doing pretty good. Just got the co-op life for my 55 and I'm loving it. All right. Yeah, I'm definitely, I'm falling so far behind on uh, like marketing efforts. There's so many videos I want to do and I owe you guys like some more par videos and, and stuff like that. And it's just been a whirlwind of stuff. Uh, kind of coming at us. So my hope is by canceling some of these trips, I'm going to buy back like those three weeks and uh, be able to catch up and get you guys some more contact. Someone's asking for a store update video for the members. Yeah, it's on my to-do list to, uh, you know, film that stuff. But it just, you know, always excuses. The yeah, but, yeah, but. Um, and I'm trying to eliminate the excuses. So that's really, it's my excuse is, I'm making excuses or I'm so busy that it results in an excuse and I'm working to alleviate that to better serve everybody. <laughs> what I do today that was rewarding? Hmm. I, I like those questions. Today for me, what was rewarding? Uh, probably letting Wincy sit on my lap. So we were, if we're being 100% honest, my wife asked me and said, I wish you could just skip the live stream and just, you know, take a nap with Wincy there.
because stressful events of learning my business partners in the hospital and me knowing that plants start arriving at 1230 at night and I got to start planning my trips and knowing that we'd already had a full week and we had 4th of July with people over yesterday. Um, so the rewarding part was spending, uh, you know, spending time with the dogs, kind of that downtime, even though it was only about 15 minutes. Yeah, 1,600 calories, you're not losing weight? Yeah, I mean, the science-wise, everything should be working. The I definitely eat irregular. What I mean by that is uh, there's days that I won't eat till midnight because I'm busy, right? I had to leave the house. and Or like a day when I'm working at the retail store expansion with Dean, maybe I grab a smoothie on the way in, and then pretty soon at like 9 p.m., everybody's getting pretty hungry, and we eat, and that's it. And then the next day you know, maybe I eat normal. So there's definitely lots of habitual things that I could change if I can get my, basically my career locked into a more sustainable pattern. What makes the Aquarium Co-op light better than some of the other ones? Well, mine won't burn your house down. It, uh, backed by a warranty, has a CRI of 95 plus. Nerd speak for, it's going to cover the full spectrum of lighting, basically. Um... We have a really long cord. So that's great. We have great customer service. It's ETL certified, which is a step kind of above slash side of UL certification. It's, um, what is it? Not FTC. What's the one that's like made for airplane stuff? It's certified for that. We have like three certifications on it. And basically the, the big TLDR of it is if you want to buy a light once, and it's going to last for a long time and have a great warranty, that's our light at the medium price level. Normally, you'd have to pay a premium price for that because we've cut out all the middlemen, like there's no more flu ball, there's nobody that we're buying from, we have it manufactured for us. You get all of that at that medium level, right? Adjustable light, very, very, very water resistant, doesn't get hot, the LEDs are efficient, uses less energy, it saves you money over time. You get that whole package and uh, at what we consider to be affordable price. Whereas Hyger lights and, and beams works and that kind of stuff, they will go for the, okay, we need to get in there cheap, we need to give a lot of light and we need to do it cheap. The efficiency is not there, the warranties aren't there, the customer service is not there, the cord's short. They're more prone to having problems, um, in my experience, right? And when you read the reviews, and so there is, it, it kind of comes down to time is money. When I was at the beginning of my career, I would buy shop lights from, from Walmart and Home Depot, and that would light my aquariums, and it would do it. But it wouldn't look that good. Like, it'd be real, real, real not good looking. And there'd be a lot of light bleed in your eyes and all that kind of stuff. And then you kind of graduate to budget lights from Amazon and you do that for a while. And then as you've been in the hobby for 10, 20 years, you want to buy it once. And then 10, 20 years ago, it's still working. It's still great. And uh, you'll learn that, well, if you buy every step up, you've now spent twice as much than buying something that's already good. And being that that was my lesson over my hobby, I thought, well, what if we could always just kind of bring that that level of like, here's where I'm going to settle anyway and not have the price be way too expensive and try to have it be affordable and then build a reputation on we build the affordable product that will last and is the moderate choice. So in the car world, I would say, how do we make Toyota Camrys all day long and keep them affordable? That's what I'm trying to do. Whereas like, well, I want to buy a Ferrari or I want to buy... Sure, that's out there. Go buy a Twin Star Light for $700. That's fine. We're not marketing to you, and you want something we don't do. And, uh, yeah, so that, that's basically the pitch is our light should be completely affordable and do everything you need to do and be reliable, which all lights will claim that, and it's you really only get to prove that stuff. It, it's, it's like hiring somebody, right? You interview them, like, oh, you'll always be on time. You'll always stay late. You're always going to be smart. Everything's going to be great. But then over time, you learn what really happens. Like, oh, yeah, they're late once a week. And, oh, they wouldn't stay to help out. and Or or they are. And that's that's how kind of all products work is you'll know in a year whether you had the right decision or not. And uh, some people work out great. Some won't. 
We got a 300 gallon Americans, South Americans, tank to fee. They eat so much extreme, it's getting expensive. Any cheaper but quality alternatives? I was thinking about Hikari. I do like Hikari foods a lot. I do agree, and you've heard me talk about this a lot, that I think Extreme's food is overpriced. Not not willingly by them. I think they're having to pay a lot, and I think there's been inflation and all of these things, and I think they've had problems in bringing the cost down in line where I think it should be. But, uh, yeah, I think Hikari is a, a, a decent alternative. Um, I, I would like to think that when we end up launching our foods, we're still in testing and all of that. Um you know, we'll, we'll be that, you know, we'll be that Toyota Camry middle of the road for everybody, but I don't know, you know, and we won't launch it until we are. And so right now, when, if I was feeding lots of big fish, I wouldn't want to feed low quality because I, it just becomes too much waste. I'd probably be shopping deals. Honestly, I'd be, I'd be looking at like, Hey, has anyone got Southern delight on sale? Is there, I, I'd probably be trying some different like Amazon type bulk foods or eBay type bulk foods, which like I've got some of that for my koi right now. And as the reason I went to the koi is it wasn't very good. Um, but no, it, it, I don't have the, the one metric I would say when you have a big aquarium or a lot of aquariums, the one metric I've always used is I believe it shouldn't be more expensive than buying frozen food. So if you can get a pound of, let me, let me look at my store because I don't want to misquote. And I know a lot of other stores watch me. And so I want to be more accurate um, with my own store. Let's see where a frozen pound of bloodworms is for us. What we retail it at. Um, right here. We sell a frozen pound of bloodworms for $12.99. That was the price I thought. So when you can buy a whole pound of frozen bloodworms for 13 bucks, it gets harder and harder for me to recommend and justify foods like Extreme Flake. I love it. I feed it every day. I love the stuff. Don't get me wrong. Money no object, Extreme Kill Flake, dope. But it's 20 bucks for three and a half ounces. The math when you're going, wait, I could do frozen uh, blood worms and brine shrimp and cyclops and baby brine shrimp and all of that is going to be cheaper than the extreme now extreme has a lot of extra vitamins it's in a format i really like to feed it's great for babies like there's a lot going on it's good that's why we sell it but if you're into i gotta feed a lot of fish and i'm going broke and i need what's that cup of noodle i start leaning in on frozen foods <coughs> Because I know the quality and the cleanliness for the water is going to be good. And I would start buying in bulk. And so I don't know if we have anything going right now because I don't manage the store. But it used to be <clears throat> if you'd buy at least 10 at a time, okay, they're 12 bucks a piece. You start buying massive amounts where I pre-order for you. You, you give me the money. I pre-order. I can give you a better deal. If you walk into our retail store and like, I want 30 of them. We only have 35. That doesn't help us. Because we still have to have a bunch to sell to people. But if you prepay, we order a week later, they're here, and we go, hey, we got 70 of these things for you. That'll save money. We do that with Dean. Um, so, yeah, I would I would use high-quality frozen foods, and then I would pair it with some more of the filler foods, and that's what I would be doing, honestly. I, I know there's people that feed, like, hot dogs and other stuff to their big Central and South American fish. But the nitrates are in there, and it leads to be so messy that I, I'm not a huge fan of that. I still want to feed a good quality fish food to my fish. I want to be able to afford it, though, and it does get hard, especially with big fish. I mean, we're feeding so many clams to Ladybird and Murphy, and those are those are big expenses. And we look at other foods, but the reality is you got to do what's right by the animal. And so it's our duty to do that. And for me, sometimes that might mean I need to downsize. When you have 100 clown loaches and they're getting big, maybe you got to sell some off so that I can afford to feed 30 big ones instead of 100 with 30 big, you know, 30 medium and 30 smalls. That doesn't equal 100. That's only 90, but I know. That's, that's live stream math for you. Your fry food is a staple of my tanks? Yeah, I, I so the fry food I like, I think... 
personally, this is my own product. I think it's a little expensive in a squeeze bottle because squeeze bottles have gotten stupid expensive. But the Fry one pound bag, I think, is fairly affordable in that realm. Like Lady Bird and, and Murphy eat a pound of food like every two to three days. Where that wouldn't make sense when a, a thing of fry food is 30 bucks. But when you're feeding, like if that pound of fry food lasts your guppy, you know, your little guppy fish room eight months, that's great. That's a good value, I think. So, yeah. Welcome, Caleb Shirley, new sub. Boom. Northfin. I find Northfin to be even more out of whack than extreme. So when I was... Because if you've been in the hobby for like 20 years, you, you see these ebbs and flows, right? When I was first getting in the hobby, you weren't keeping fish right unless you were doing New Life Extreme, right? Or New Life Extreme. New Life Spectrum. <laughs> it's kind of a funny slip. Those companies are so close together in terms of formulations, but New Life Spectrum. And then it was, and Hikari was always kind of a mainstay. And then it was, I think it was Northfin. And then for like a, a millisecond, so it's going to be funny. You guys are going to watch this play out, right? New Era has signed with Fritz. New Era Fish Food. I had meetings with them probably six years ago now where I was trying to bring on my own food and wanted to bring it to America. And it was just proving to be too hard. We weren't big enough to really place big enough orders and all that. Their food is great. I do like it quite a bit. It's it's not hard. It's a... Uh, you know, it's a uh, a moist pellet. It's got a lot of moisture in it. So now Fritz is partnering up with them. They're getting it into a lot more uh, public aquariums and zoos and things. And I think what you're going to see is that's going to be one of the next booms is, uh, is New Era Foods. And rightfully so, they're good. But then they're going to peter off and then another boom is going to happen and throw in whenever the aquarium co-op you know, whenever we do our own foods, throw in, there is a boom for extreme. And with Northfin in general, um, I find that, like, I'm just, I just Googled it. And so on Amazon, we're looking at Northfin cichlid pellets, or let's say krill. Well, that now it's going to look like I'm skewing it, but krill pellets, um, come on, work. My internet's like broken here. It won't click. I don't know. I was trying to go to Chewy.com. But Northfin, here we go. Northfin Premium Cichlid Food. It is one pound is seventeen twenty three, And I will maintain this forever that it becomes, I, I, I meet it with, uh, suspicion when I'm like the prepared food with fillers is more expensive than pure foods you know that's th sometimes there's a little bit of trickery with dry weights and wet weights and there's things like that but um that's where I feel like we our prepared foods on average should be cheaper than pure foods because I just that's what I believe that being said making flake is difficult Making very tiny pellets can be difficult. Um, the run-of-the-mill cichlid pellet, not that difficult. But, yeah. I was under the impression New Era is unable to sell to retailers in the U.S. due to some sort of lawsuit. I know they had issues with their distribution distri distributors in Florida. Uh, yeah, I'm not exactly sure about all that. I mean, I feel like if that was the case, just rebrand it. Be like, hey, it's fish food four. And then like good food. Doesn't really matter what the name is. Julian says legit is also pretty pricey. I got a deal on some while back. And though my Corey seemed to like oh, and my Corey seemed to like the pellets. Don't wrong. I like Mike, you know. But I think his food is overpriced. Do I think his food is good? Yes. I try to always give merit, right? So if I think the product is good, I will say that. If I think it's overpriced, I will say that. And so I've, I've maintained with him, I go, I think it's scale that's holding him back. If he could sell 100x the t amount he's selling, he could lower the price. And then it would automatically sell. It's like that chicken and the egg. 
And part of it is, who do you want to be as a consumer? There are times when I spend way more money. There's a kid on the side of the road selling a glass of lemonade. I'm about to buy a $20 cup of warm lemonade because I want to support the kid, their summer, you know, and they're going to tell me they're saving up for, you know, the latest Pokemon card or a bike or whatever it's going to be, right? But then I can go to the convenience store and a Snapple's $6. I'm losing my mind for a lemonade. So it depends on context. And with Mike, it's a creator. He does a lot of stuff for free, giving out information. He's really trying to make a superior fish food, and he's using his college degree to help him do that. And so there, I want the support to be there. And I've, I've, we've looked at it like three or four times, and we can't find a good way for us to work together in earnest without, without me having to break my morals of being honest. Like I'm like, hey, I have to tell people I think it's overpriced. I can't get around that because I believe that. And so I've, I've worked with them like, can we, you know, does it make sense to, what if I commit to a huge buy? Can we get the price down? And then, you know, he's worried about the stores that have picked it up and, and all of that. But I do believe it's a good fish food. And I believe that when you spend that money, the lion's share of that's going to an entrepreneur trying to make their way in the world and they'll be doing their best. Right or wrong, they'll be doing their best where, you know, with other companies like let's say Tetra, when you buy that flake Tetra food, you'll have no idea. Is that paying a CEO a giant bonus? Is that launching their cat food line? Is it, you know, not that it to some people won't matter, but I do think that there's something to when I buy this product, it's the same reason we'll buy stuff at farmers markets. You feel like, hey, I'm rewarding the person that directly made this as opposed to going through a bunch. And I'm sure we'll get to that point where you guys won't have a connection with me anymore and you'll just think, well, I spend money with Aquarian Co-op and then it goes to this thing that I don't agree with. Like they started doing oxalotl food or something. I don't know. And that's just a natural progression of companies and stuff like that. And that'll that'll be a sad day for me. But, um, you know, there's all kinds of different buyers and different price points. And I do like the food. I just don't like the price. And when the good news is, there's always a chance to fix that. Tomorrow they could fix the price and hey, you'd be feeling pretty good about it. <laughs> Can I set up a lemonade stand by your house? I mean, it'll be awkward, but I'll just stick to my story of getting the latest Pokemon card. Yep. I mean, you could just say I'm trying to buy some fish food and that would work too. What's my opinion on doing two lights instead of one on a 75 gallon? I'm a big fan of that myself. Um, I at 18 inches and and deeper, I like two lights. One because I, like I have this problem in my own fish room because I've got all the 40 breeders and stuff. I do hate going. Ooh, do I want the light in front of the hinge or behind the hinge? They each have different looks, and if you get one on each, it looks better. And you know, being that I make my own light. On one hand, I should just make it perfect. And what I would do is I would run two of my lights on each tank at like 30% strength on those 40 breeders, and it would look great to me. The other part of me goes, people are just going to assume I'm trying to get them to buy extra, extra lights, and I will lose my rapport that I have with you guys. And so I don't do that, even though I think that would look better. I don't want it to seem like I'm being too extravagant and not realistic as a hobbyist. Because I believe in all of my years, the only thing that got extra lights were show tanks. Everything that was kind of like, yeah, it's a tank for me and I enjoy it. I, I do it, you know, bare minimum. So that's why I use sponge filters. That's why I use one air pump for the whole room. That's why I use one light. I, I try to keep real aquariums as opposed to only for show. What can I feed my green spot of puffer besides pest or ram's horn snails to keep up with the beak? You could try some clams on the half shell. Um, sometimes they'll take to those. Mm, there's not a lot of else, so you kind of you kind of are in that commitment when uh, you bought that pet. Can we buy frozen foods from a corn co-op during the winter? No, it's quite the uh, endeavor to ship frozen foods with our level of quality we want. That, that one of those things is. 
a lot of times, oh, other people are doing it, and I always have to like, how do I eloquently say, but they are willing to accept more damages and losses for their customers than we are? And so we're not willing to do that. Uh, plus, I, I will say there is another reason too. A lot of companies have a uh, strategic advantage. Like we're way up in a corner. If we were in the center of America, oh, some of these doors would unlock and go, oh, okay, that's not so bad anymore. But being that we're in the corner, some of it's just like, no, nah, that doesn't make sense. Hello from Australia. We'll catch the VOD on Friday during my fish time. All right. Well, Aussie and 32, have a good one. Uh, so for the 75, should I get two 24 inches and I get, get one to go on each side? Oh, I would, I was talking about four footers. So I usually do like one four footer on the front and one towards the back. But not at full intensities, not unless I was really, uh, you know, really injecting that CO2 and trying to do some hard stuff. So, yeah. Hmm. What's the best beginner to live food to culture? I was thinking about Daphne or black worms. Both of those, in my opinion, are crazy hard to produce any amount. The easiest, in my opinion, would be vinegar eels. Order up a culture for like five, ten bucks. You'll keep them going forever in a day. Hmm. Well, oh, yeah. I was going to mention that uh, yesterday some guests saw that we had koi in the pond. And I go, what? I haven't seen koi in years. And sure enough, I go sit there for a while and I saw at least three. So the eagles, the bald eagles have not eaten all the koi. And I've now, my passion or my interest is a little more... Um, you know, revitalized in the pond project. So I'm hoping to kind of, maybe I'll put my Shabunkins out there. Maybe I'll get the auto feeder that I mean to do get set up. I want to get some power to there still, but we got to finish the retail store first. So how many times do I repeat ICX after no more spots? I personally do one additional treatment and I let it sit. So if I saw no spots today, I would dose it once more and just let it sit until my normal water change period. That served me well over the last 20 years. Uh, any siphon recommendations? I bought one on Amazon, but it made cleaning my tank a fiasco. In my opinion, the only one worth investing money into currently is the Python system. It's green. They have great... Uh, tubing not all tubings are equal and you know there are parts that i would upgrade and fix for that company but you know when you ask me what's the thing you pull off the shelf what does aquarium co-op sell we sell python and we will sell lees so if i was buying online i would look well let me do that right now let me do the let me do the search comparison on amazon and i would tell you which one i buy i've used both for many many years so Python gravel vac, let's say we want the 25 footer. That's the most common for people. Let's find a 25 footer. A 25 footer looks like it runs about 55 bucks. And if I do the Lee's gravel vac, uh, there's the $25 or 25 foot kit. They charge 67. So I personally would say, hey, Go buy the Python system today for 55 bucks. And uh, we sell Lee's gravel vacs in the store and some Python stuff. We sell both. And I hope to someday launch our own. I've got ideas on how I want to connect to sinks. I've got ideas on how I want the connectors, how long, the tubing, all of these things. But we haven't found the right partner. We were looking when we were in China, but we have not found the right partner yet. I would mention 25 foot was $31 on Amazon a few weeks ago. All right. There's always going to be deals. You see a deal, snap it up. But I would say, what would I say? Even in my career, 20 years ago, Amazon was a lot different than it is today. And if you've been using Amazon this whole time, you'll know. 
you'll know that any product, there's now 50 different variants of it with random strings of letters as a company name that really don't care. It's all volume. They're buying some of the reviews, that kind of stuff. More and more people are seeing it where, you know, they reach out because you had a concern, but they're like, hey, leave us a review and we'll give you some money or another product, right? And so when you just, you know, when you look at things like lights, let's look at an aquarium light. And this will always be my feedback. There's probably 30 pages of aquarium lights. And let's take, you know, I, I like to beat up on Hyger a lot. Let's, let's, let's beat up on Aquanite today. So if I, Aquanite, uh, aquarium light. So they have one, two, three, four. That's a competitor or like a, a knockoff. So that's not them. Five. Six. Maybe they're down to six. So on the first page, I see six uh, Aquanite lights. My stance will always be, it's really going to be hard to make a product that is the best when you're trying to do six versions of the same thing. And that... That's what I, like, we, we have one light. And when we want to make a change, we change one light. We try to make one light better. We make one little change. And we do it again. And we do it again. And we do it again. Or Hyger. Let's see Hyger. Hyger has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16 they have 16 different aquarium lights and uh you know i just i don't believe that they can develop lights well that way kelly casper says aquanite lights are really really tough i love mine yeah when i tested them they used a lot of power and they would burn out but all companies evolve you know they could be the ferraris of tomorrow for all we know so um i just i find that well, I'm trying to put I'm trying to put this behind the lens of an Aquarius, right? So you you see someone they go, I love my Aquanite or I love my Hyger Light, and you show up and you go, okay, well, which version? There's 16 versions here, and you read through them, and there's people talking, oh, this thing was melting down, this thing was great, this one got water, this one didn't, and then you need to further refine it, like, oh, was it a planet tank? Was it a saltwater tank? Was it just a fish only tank? And you run into a lot of it. And so it's hard, I find, when, you know, so for instance, the this light I'm looking at, it's, okay, it's 12 inches, right? It does 633 lumens. It's 6,500 Kelvin. And I don't think the average hobbyist will know what any of that really means. So I don't think that actually helps them. So then they just start looking at reviews and, and uh, you know, little videos and stuff. But I don't think that helps. It helps some, helps some more, but I'm not sure it's going to help them find the product they need. And so my philosophy is, let's just make the easiest plant light. And when you go, yeah, but I don't want to, I don't want a plant light. Then I go, great. There are all these other companies that should help you do that. Uh, but we, we want to help you grow live plants. And so we're developing a system to help you do that. So if you need to do that, we're really good at that. You want to do something else, we're not set up to do that. We're not a company that's going to launch, like even Fluval. Fluval had, let me let me go to Fluval, because we sold their lights. How many lights does Fluval have? Fluval Aquatics homepage. In English, products, lighting, freshwater LEDs, they have one, two, three, four, five. Salt water, one, two, three, four, five. Fluorescent bulbs, one. All right, so they have 11. And that's a big company and everything, but I think we all know um, they could make those lights better because we've offered feedback for many years. Like, Why not do this? Why not do that? And I think they get crushed under, well, there's 11 different changes we need to make and do all of this and what's the marketing behind it and, and all of that. So 
with us, it's really easy. Like, okay, we're making, we got one light, we're making one change and we're going to do one marketing campaign to let you know what the change is. I have dropped my Aquadite light many times, but they keep going. I breed and need a lot of light, not planted though. Yeah. You know, the, the, the caveats I'll offer to people are how much energy is that using? So check on that. You might be like, oh, it uses none. Great. Is it UL rated? Like will, if that light does go faulty, will it void your insurance? Like there, there's, you know, there's things to, you know, think about, especially as you're breeding for profit, right? So if you're breeding fish for profit and it burns down your house, insurance is going to look at that in multiple ways. Going, you running a business? You didn't tell us. Oh, the thing that caused the fire wasn't you rated? There's going to be multiple ways for them to get out and you're going to be in a bad spot. So try to have very few ways that that's going to happen. Not everything you're going to use is going to be UL rated and everything, but try to make sure it's been a product that's been going for a long time and limit your exposure where you can. Has it always been easy for me to socialize in large crowds like Aquashella? Is there an opener that you found works for the majority of the time? Mm, no, I, I in community college took uh, what was that? That was uh, public speaking, and I was terrified, I was terrible at it. Um, and to this day, I still get very nervous speaking in front of large crowds. But it's easy for me to talk to people one on one because. I know that if they're watching me with any kind of capacity, they're just a fish nerd. And the easiest opener is, what kind of aquariums do you keep? And people start listing off. And because I have a fairly wide knowledge of aquariums, I can be engaged in the conversation. And that kind of takes over. It's almost like an autopilot. I'm interested. I'm asking questions. Uh, but when it's, I got to get up and give a presentation, I'm not so much afraid of the people anymore. It's afraid of, how is the equipment going to fail or what is going to interrupt that's going to make this not be a good presentation? And it could be simple things like Aquashella, like, oh, they're talking on the mic over everybody uh, because there's a, a, a frag competition going on. Or it could be that the microphone's all crackly or it could be that the acoustics are just actually terrible right there. And so all of those are what are making me nervous most times. And then most speakers get this uh, sense of, calm once they're done and so a lot of people the speakers at aqua shell we all want to be first the sooner you can get your talk done with the rest of the weekend you know you're on easy mode so when you you know when you're the the what do i want to call it um uh main stage speaker where i can't remember what they call it you know where it's like oh we're gonna hype this one up for saturday they hype that one up for sunday you know it's uh You'd rather go, you know, talking to other creators. They're like, oh, sweet, I got 10 a.m. Like, there's barely going to be in here. I'm going to get in, get out, get done. It'll be easy, you know. But there's a lot built up when it's like, oh, especially my big thing I'm thinking about, people fly in and they drive from far away, and I just don't want to be a huge disappointment. So I try to undersell and over-deliver. That's my, that's my goal to all of business. You know, like, what do I get with a membership? Nothing. And then people are like, but don't you get this, 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 this? Like, well, yeah, you get all those things, but I'm not guaranteeing any of them. Like, I, I know that the order for, we're, we're buying, I don't want to say exactly how much we're spending on it, but it's a lot of money. And uh, the order we're about to place for the five-year um, reward outside of the coin is, what, $4,400? And that doesn't buy very many of them. So we're, you know, we're definitely trying to give back of like, yes, this is a lot of money and it should be a really cool thing that people cherish. I'm hoping I will. So, and that's how I run my whole business. If anybody, you know, if anything, I love it. Hopefully other people love it too, but I know I love it. So I was struggling with finding quality plant. Wait, tongue moving faster than brain. I was struggling with finding quality lights for my plant shelf until I rigged up my spare aquarium co-op light. So many bad ones just die in two months. Yeah, so if you're talking about like just indoor house lights, there was the boom of COVID, everyone's got a billion plants, and then all of a sudden everybody's just buying lights. And there's still, you know, that's trickling down now, but 
so this is a great example. A great example that honestly happened this last week. We're building the retail store and we need to put lights above the counter. And I go, every fish room I built so far, the overhead lighting, we buy it from Home Depot, we buy it from Lowe's, we buy it from Amazon, and they're all burning out. Even the newest little bulbs I put over the couch and the and the table from when we took down the pond, so that's what, maybe four months? They're burning out. One was flickering today, and I'm like, okay, I gotta get a ladder, I gotta take it down before I can film. And so we're putting in the aquarium co-op light in our counter area up above because we know the manufacturing process. We know the high quality parts. We know the engineers we've had look at them and test the capacitors and all of this, and we know it's going to work. Whereas the random thing on, you know, like on homedepot.com, it's like it only has to last 10 minutes longer than the warranty. That's all we care about. And we really want it to last forever. Now, we, we know not everything lasts forever. There's going to be different, you know, how much heat, how much moisture, how much this, how many power outages or power surges or, you know, environmental factors could affect a light. But on average, we want our stuff to last a really, really long time. If I'm being honest, I'm chasing the Costco mentality. When it's wrong, we'll make it right. And... The Eheim mentality where, oh, I only buy Eheim heaters because they last forever. But then they change their process multiple times and their heaters don't last forever anymore. And so when you see greatness, I latch onto that and I go, yeah, we're just going to do that. It's going to take a long time for us to get there because Eheim built that reputation over, you know, 30 years. We're not going to build it in only 10, right? But the starting building blocks of that is something like a light where five, seven years from now, that light's still working and you need to set up another aquarium, you're probably going to buy our light. Where right now, everyone's still going, well, what's the difference between your light and this one that's cheap on Amazon? And I can't say, well, like in five years, our light will still be standing because like, I haven't done the testing. For all I know, Hyger will be, and Aquanine and all those will be standing there too. Now, that being said, in my testing and watching people's fish rooms and all of that, a lot of them go bad. And what you guys don't know is a lot of creators that get supported by some of these companies, they don't let you know when they're failing. They just tell the company they send them new ones. So not that they're all dishonest. I'm just saying not everything's always what it appears. We do the same thing, by the way. If someone has a problem with a product, we send them a new one. We don't tell them they can or can't tell people, but most times... When you send someone a new product, they're happy with it and they don't want to say bad things. But I encourage everybody, be honest. We're not trying to buy a good review here. None of that. And it's because I, if our products suck, we need to know and we need to make them better. That's, that's the reality of it. And I call us, I call my company out on it all the time. One of the instances I was using our Katapa leaves and I was not happy at the price. So now we sell. 20 Katapa leaves for the exact same price. Why? Because I wasn't happy with it. And do we make as much money? No, it's not good. But I don't want you guys to judge like, well, their Katapa leaves aren't a good price, so I'm sure their light sucks. Our light is amazing. And I don't want other products to drag that down. And so if we need to make no money on Katapa leaves, fine. But, you know, the, the things that were really, like, I can't, I can't meet with the manufacturers of Katapa leaves and make a Katapa leaf do something crazy. It's just a product. You know, it's just like it falls off a tree. Someone flattens it the best way they can. They try to make them uniform shape. They try to make sure they're clean and all that. And the package, that's all we can do. But when it comes to lights and the crazy stuff we're starting to do with sponge filters and some of these other things, sky's the limit. And now that our, our resources, we're being able to reinvest them like there's a whole redesign on the power head I want to do. And, and now these companies see us for someone who will work with them long term. They're willing to do more things that they wouldn't do before. Before they'd be like, you can buy what we have. You can make minor changes. Now when we go, hey, we want to do something completely new, they're open to it instead of, well, you got to start with something we're already doing. And then we can make a few tweaks. Is there a way to get CO2 easier? I used to get it from a local brewery shop in my town, but they closed. Uh, look into 
like a local paintball store or like a big five sporting goods. Um, both of those, the brewing stories you had mentioned, and then we get ours from like a central welding. Here's, here's the thing to know everywhere in America, pretty much the world, really. If there is a soda machine at a restaurant, they're ordering CO2 from somebody. You just need to figure out where they're getting it from. And most companies like money. And if you aren't a pain in the butt and you show up to their their center and they carry the size that you're going to want to swap, they will do it. They'll be like, yeah, 25 bucks will swap this. No biggie. Right? So there should be. Now, obviously, I don't live in super rural America. And so it might be like, oh, my closest place is six hours away. Like, that would suck. But for a lot of us that live in normal city types... There's going to be, you know, McDonald's and Taco Bell and all that. And they all got to get CO2 from somewhere. And that place usually will also service walk-in clients. Okie dokie. Any suggestions for a 40-gallon tank, fresh water? Oh, yes. You need to get yourself on over to the advice center. Why? Why? Why would I go to the advice center, Corey, on AquariumCoop.com? Because we have something called the cookie cutter setups. And we happen to have one for 40 gallon aquariums. And it lets you know what kind of equipment we recommend. It lets you know uh, what type of fish we think do well there. And it's a great starting place. So I'm going to link that. Boom. Someone asked if this is a gaming mouse. Yes, kind of. This is just a Logitech G403 with uh, enough gamer grunge on it. I don't know if you can see that. You know how I know when I'm truly a nerd? You've got stuff over here and you're like eating Cheetos or what's something else that... I don't know, some kind of food, but you're using the mouse because you're gaming. And then you like look down at your mat and you're like, what have I done? This is disgusting. So yeah, I call it the gamer grunge. But no, I've got, I've got all these other mice. Like, yeah, there's a steel series one there that my mom got for free. And, uh, I just never hooked it up yet. I'm not really big into the whole mouse thing, like different weights and all of that. I don't play... FPS first person shooters, so I don't really get much benefit out of the mice. Uh, let's see. I have the exact same gaming mouse. I will say, if I was choosing a gaming company to model my business after, this might get us into some trouble. I really like Logitech because their ear cups will fit my ears and not make them hurt. They were the first one to adopt Wi-Fi headsets um, back in the day. They got the G15 keyboard that you can macro. A lot of cool features. That being said, you're like, oh, I just heard you like the logic, Corey. Like, oh, why do you have the HyperX clouds? Here's, here's how much of a nerd I am. My headphones, I have custom cushions. I forget what the, the brand name is. Wicked uh, something. If you're really a headset, keyboard, mouse nerd, I watch Techni. He's like my one of my favorite YouTubers. I'll, I'll link him. I like his style. I don't need to watch that many reviews uh, about headphones or headsets and all that. But the authenticity, the authentic way that he conveys the reviews on all this crap that no one really cares about is who I like to be. I want to be authentic and, you know, we all have preferences and stuff, but the techni, that guy will set you straight on headphones and that kind of stuff. What's my favorite game right now? EverQuest. I, uh, I liked uh, the tried and true, what I know about it. And cause I work all the time. It's slow enough paced that, uh, that I can do work while playing. A uh, metal razor-like tool or a tool with a scrub pad to clean algae off your glass tank. Well, 
I like using a razor blade on all the flat surfaces, but when you start getting to where the silicone and the corners and everything, I, I like to use a melamine pad. If the algae is super easy, melamine pad the whole way. If it's, uh, you know, if it's a lot of spot algae and stuff, I like a razor blade. <laughs> Laughed when Dean promoted the co-op towel, but I got one and holy, it's great. Who knew you could love a towel? I, all I can tell you is all the products we put our name on, I obsess about them and I spend a stupid amount of time try, and I keep asking this and I go, what makes this better than all the other ones? And if we can't come up with a reason, then we don't do it. And so towel i'm like okay i want thickness i want the right embroidery i want it to be black i want it to be affordable i want it you know we just got to uh work on it hi Corey, are you still friends with john of kg tropicals no i hate that guy someone's gonna clip that and send it to john now and uh leave out this part no i was talking with john when did i talk with john mm, he's down a little way so it might have been 10 days or so right here last time i was chatting up john was okay it's been a little longer than that june 15th at 11 06 a.m we were conversing what's weird that you might not expect is we usually don't talk about fish we're usually talking about lawnmowers uh i was impressed that he put in his ac into his his fish room and stuff and so we in my opinion we chat a little more about work and you know lawnmowers and that kind of stuff because we both talk fish all day long, and it's not really like, well, what do you think goes in a 40-gallon breeder? Well, what do you think? It's more like, oh, man, uh, my lawnmower sucks, and then this one's great. And then, like, I remember, like, a month and a half ago, I was telling him, like, who knew lawn sweepers were so fun? Like, if you don't have one, you should get one. I love this thing. And then he was telling me, he's like, yeah, but it's so dry over here. I got to wear a full-on mask. I look ridiculous. And the last thing I want to be doing is driving more across this. And I was like, I get it. So we're on that level of friend nerdiness. Not so much fish nerd friends. We're more just like, yep, we're in the same circles. We've been talking. We've been friends a long time. And we find stuff besides fish interesting. Any tips for getting that last bit of brine shrimp eggs out of the tin? It depends. Are you going to reuse that tin? What you what I've done in the past, you've got your Zis brine shrimp hatcher. you got a little bit of eggs left in there. Just get it in there. So, And I'll have another batch ready. So what I do is like, oh, there's only a little bit left. Kind of get it in there and get the eggs out. And then take your fresh one, get another amount, and add it to it. Like if you've got a bunch of eggs in there if you just put your thing in there it's just gonna get stuck on it so you got to do it like rinsing it kind of first and then add more to it maybe a dumb question but do you guys go to aquashella my first one will be in november in daytona and the clash in september thanks mike b we've done i don't know how many i've probably done six aquashellas five or six so we have done a bunch uh, are we going to this one? No, we're not currently signed up for it. Um, yeah, they're the the TLDR of it. They're highly disruptive to our workflows. We have to get a lot of people, get a lot of moving parts to do a show, and it slows down releasing new products, filming schedules, and all of that. And so, right now, I'm laser focused on getting the retail store done launching some new products, getting ahead on video content, um, you know, training, training people, working on company culture, all of that. And so traveling takes our focus off of that and we're, we're tired of that. So, um, we're just taking a break. Do I have a least favorite fish that I've kept? I didn't really like the dovi. I love adult dovis when other people keep them, but the raising of a dovi, not my favorite because they, they don't really look beautiful yet. And they're they're kind of ornery, but not impressive in my opinion. 
And then when you're cleaning their tank, they like to bite the crap out of you all the time. And so raising one, not nearly as fun as playing with somebody else's. Um, trade shows are a ton of work. I really, all right. I got really involved with Aquatrell this year. And I was burnt out for like two weeks after. Yeah, it's, it's intense. And, and what people don't realize is we spent 30 grand to do a show. Yes. Well, Aquashella, was well, all you could pay? Like, yeah. Aquashella goes, here's 1500 bucks, Corey. And I go, oh, thanks. I'm only negative 28,500 because we use, you know, we give away shirts and the booth and we're putting on a members event and we're doing member giveaways and we're, we're trying to do all of these things. And the shipping, like even just the shipping blows your mind when you're like, wait, how much was it to ship the shirts? Like, oh, it's $1,400, like just to ship them? Like, that's dumb. So we, we've, we you know, my 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 mindset, and someone's going to steal this idea, and then I'm going to go, hey, that was my idea. Oh, no. My idea is actually I want to do a uh, big online event for Aquarium Co-op. So let's say to do Aqua Shell in November costs us thirty grand. Why not do an online live stream where I set up speakers, uh, I give away shirts and member swag and all of this kind of stuff, and we do it like a three day event. And I, I think I'm like I think that's just better, like three days from my own home where I line up guests and we do all that and we just spend a lot of time together versus five days minimum with travel somewhere else. And what I what I know happens is every time I go to a show, other people are like, well, there's no shows near me. I get to miss out. Where if I put it online for free for everybody, everyone gets to partake in it. And I think that's where we're going. If we're going to spend the time to do a show Let's do a show online. And so we haven't started planning it or anything yet, but I think the next one we do, we want to try a big event online. Please settle the debate. I just bought a 55 gallon of Petco. Are they terrible? The bad reviews are flooding in and I'm so worried about the tank splitting. I'm making sure it's level. Please help. Here's what I can tell you. The aquariums you'll buy in my store come from the same place Petco buys their tanks. They come from the same factory. Also, with all stuff being sold, when something goes wrong, you'll be vocal about it. When something goes right, you're less likely to be vocal about it. So if we do, well, here's a good example. I believe we have basically 12,000 happy customers every month. If we do a good job, we get about 250 reviews. 99% of them are positive. If we do a bad job, if we have 10,000 angry customers, guess what? We're going to get 5,000 bad reviews. So I think when you're selling in the amounts that Petco is, if you sell 10,000 Aquion aquariums in a year and the defect rate is 1 in 50, or one in a hundred, and those one in a hundred, when it ruins their their living room, they leave a bad review, you're going to go, oh, there's 37 of those. These things are breaking left and right. The reality is there's a hundred to every one bad review that are doing great for many, many years. So I, I, I would say my entire store has basically been built off of those types of tanks, and I don't, I have very few problems ever. Now, in my opinion, the Tetra tanks had a little bit of a bad print run a few years ago, but they, they pretty much fixed that. I'd absolutely come to your online show and have my wallet open and ready. Yeah, well, and there there is some things to work out. I want to give away like 10,000 shirts, but... 10,000 shirts plus shipping and all that would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I want to try and do it where there's ways to win them. Maybe it's trivia. Maybe it's random. Maybe it's uh, you place an order and you can get one. Maybe it's, you know, just try to find a way where 
when I play an event like that, how do we make sure the seven-year-old can participate, the 70-year-old can participate, the rich, the poor, the in-between, the super nerd that knows everything about aquarium co-op, the person that just met us yesterday. I want everybody to have a good time. And so you got to mix it up. I can't have someone speak into, you know, fin ray identification the whole time when you're new to the hobby. I got to have all that. And so I got to create an agenda like day one is this, day two is this, day three is this. I want to, in my, my plan is to have, uh, Zenzo run it and then I'll live stream a bunch and then I'm going to say hey I'm going to the store and then you guys can come visit at the store while we're live we do some stuff there and then we head back home or we go out to eat and so maybe while I'm driving Zenzo puts on Chris Luke up and he's talking about shrimp and now I'm at the store and now I'm doing a Q&A with you guys live at the store and doing that kind of stuff and then we go out to dinner and while I'm driving and getting everybody over to dinner, right, there's another speaker. And then we cut to, hey, it's dinner. We're all eating at Applebee's. And you get to meet some of the fans. You'd be like, oh, my gosh, here's, you know, Daryl Deemery flew out for this. That's crazy, right? Like, you get to match some of the names with that. Then we do, you know, it's nighttime. And so maybe I want to go to sleep. And it's like, all right, let's get Oliver Knott. Oliver Knott can do an hour, right? And the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. So it's literally 72 hours. Of entertainment and I've never seen anyone in the aquarium space do it it's been done on twitch and some other stuff and I want to plan that so that you know I mentioned rich poor 770 in between nerd not nerd don't forget worldwide how do we get some of that merch to the rest of the world how do we make sure that the person right now where it's three o'clock in the morning when they wake up hey they're still doing stuff I didn't miss it all I want to try to include everybody yeah Matt but how do you how do you film it all Yep. So there's there's a lot to to plan an event the way I want it to be, where we've got a big budget to pull it off and everything. I think it could be cool. I think there could be a lot of people that could try a lesser version of it. But, uh, you know, I, I really want to try. And because part of it would be, you know, get more memberships, get more subscribers, get more everything. Everybody wins. <laughs> If you dose CKM Prime and Stability to make ammonia less toxic, couldn't you theoretically do that for several days and not do a water, cha water change when there's an ammonia spike? Yes. Those chemicals are made to work that way. Uh, they're not sustainable super duper duper long term, but uh, yeah, it, you definitely can use it that way. Technical spec question. The black aquarium tubing does not go on to... Hold on. The black aquarium tubing does not go on to purchase from aquarium co-op, of course. The Zis Brian Surf Hatchery rigid tubing with an airstone. It does. So the 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 rigid piece, you need to get it like warm or work it, but it does fit because I've done it. It's not the easiest fit. That's one of those metric to standard type of things, but if you got some hot water in a mug and you dip the end of the tubing in there you can get it over each side, right? And uh, then it'll work. But you only need a really short piece. I use a real short piece when I do it. Uh, let's see here. Business owners are secretly millionaires, right? I mean, technically, I'm a millionaire with the valuation of the business. Like, we have a lot of inventory. But the, the, the hard part about being a business owner is... On paper, lots of money. In actual paper money, not a lot of money. It's uh, you know, it's like, well, that light's worth a hundred dollars when it sells, but if it never sells, worth negative however much we paid for it. So we live in that fear constantly of like, yeah, we sold how much today? We sold thirty thousand dollars worth of stuff today. We just placed a two hundred thousand dollar sponge filter order, like, oh my gosh. So it's it's hard to watch the wire transfers going out. And you're like, you know, when we bought when we brought on regulators and it was like, oh my gosh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. I hope they sell. And then they start selling and they start funding the next project and the next project. So it's kind of like waves. The next wave funds the next product that funds the next thing. Uh, and a lot of times, 
it, it uh, lines up for us. Not always, though. How important is iron to plants? Pretty darn important, but not so important to the amount people dose iron. A lot of water already has some iron in it. Easy Green, right, already has iron. So many people buy Easy Green and iron for just like normal setups. Like you only need to dose iron if you need more iron than what Easy Green is already supplying, which not a lot of people need. Aaron's catching us live for the first time in almost a year. This whole working full-time thing gets in the way of being a fish nerd. Yeah, well, hopefully it, it sounds even sweeter after a long, hard day at work. A lot of people listen to us at work. Two-hour show, you're doing something, maybe you're driving for work, or maybe you're just in your office. You just have me on in the background waiting for me to make a crazy sound. Thank you for answering about the sea cam. I asked because in Texas water, there's been pretty warm coming out of the tap since our heat wave, and I don't want to cook the fish when I change water. Yeah, we run to that too. Not, not nearly on that extreme probably, but our source water changes in temperature. So in the summer, when it's really hot, when we do water changes, we can't really cool it down. So that's not advantageous to us. So you just manage it. Do I recommend using a powerhead pump on my largest sponge filter to, for more efficient cleaning? Um, I don't know if I'd say it's necessarily more efficient. Can you? Yes. Are there setups where it makes sense? I think so, yeah. Uh, but I wouldn't just outright say this is better than the other. I think it really does depend on what's the setup of the tank. I'm a brand new customer within the last two weeks, and I'm completely happy with your company. All right, well, thank you. If, uh, you know, maybe after another two weeks or a month in, you still appreciate what we do, maybe give us a review somewhere. That'd be helpful. And I want to follow that up with, if you don't like us, leave us a review as well. Because I don't want to only, I think it's disingenuous to be like, only give us a review if it's good. When the reality is, um, you should do both. Both good and bad. Have you ever tried Greg Sage's powdered plant fertilizer? I have. I've used it before I developed my own. So uh, before Easy Green was on the market, or not even well, before that, even before I was using it in my own fish room, yes, uh, I have used Greg Sage's fertilizer. It does work, but it's for me, it's not as complete. Like I think it works much better in his style fish room where it's like yeah there's some plants in some of the tanks but they're not like fully planted tanks so that's my takeaway from it is there any risk in doing a water wait dosing water conditioner in water that has no chlorine in it probably practically no like whenever i'm dosing water conditioner i'm like and there's some i don't even measure it that being said, I am sure out of all the hundreds of thousands of fish that I've been in care of and all that, have I killed a fish with too much dechlorine? Probably at some point. That being said, I probably saved more fish by having too much dechlorine than not enough. It's, you know, if they're flushing the system and all that and you don't put enough in, that could be really detrimental. And obviously there's extremes, right? 10 gallons of dechlorinator in a 20 gallon tank, not recommended, you know? We're talking about, oh, it should have been 10 milliliters. Ah, there's 12. Like, it's fine. Aquarium Co-op service, customer service is bomb. I had a broken heater. They hooked me up with a gift card, and I ended up just dropping more money on more plants and a new heater. Perfect score. Thank you. I, I will be clear. Stuff goes wrong. Our crap will break. It can get broken in the mail. There could be a manufacturing defect. That being said, when that does happen, let us know. We will make it right. We will document it. Candy will document it. There will be meetings every single week in what are the metrics? Are there any anomalies in the products? We're collecting that from retail stores, over 100 RPP stores. We're collecting it from over 10,000 customers a month. And in aggregate, we look at all that data and we make tweaks and we look, where do we need to focus? Do we need to stop selling something? And we don't let stuff get above 5%, right? So five out of a hundred could be defective and that could be plants. You might go, why don't you guys sell Anubis anymore? 
It's the easiest plant in the world because I can't keep it under 5%. We don't sell Anubias anymore. And when are you going to have it back, Corey? When we find a farm that can supply it with us and we think we can get it to you with under 5% mishap. Even though 95 out of 100 are going to be good, making five customers sad is, one, not profitable, and two, not a good user experience. So we, we avoid it at all costs. Do I have aquarium aquarium lays in stock? I don't know off the top of my head. Let me tell you. The survey says I've got tiger lotus bulbs and we have dwarf aquarium lilies. Go, go now. Buy, buy them all. Any advice for wait, any advice for the months working towards an established tank? Feed lightly, have things hooked up to a timer, meaning uh, like the light and all of that, and just let things work through it, right? There's metabolisms on all the plants, all the fish, all that kind of stuff. Bacteria, you need, st you need time for it just to do what it's going to do. Candy is better than AI? Yes. I am very anti-AI customer service. Like to me, personally, I'm getting in the relaxed mode now. Personally, I think Amazon has made a grave mistake by going to chatbot customer service. Because when I order something and it's wrong, there's nothing more infuriating to me of fighting with a chatbot to like, here's a perfect example. I got back from China. Wasn't feeling that great. I tested positive for COVID. We needed more COVID tests. I ordered them on Amazon because we didn't want to go out and get COVID tests. More of them. They arrived and they were expired. Right? So I try to hop on customer service and I'm like, okay, choose a reason. Like, well, defective. And I put in that they were expired when they showed up by like four months. And the chat bot spits out, this product is non-returnable because it's a medical product. I'm still pissed about this. The problem is, is it worth my time to chase down and finally get someone on the other end that can be like, oh, let me take care of it for you, sir. We're only talking about like $25, but this is part of the, the game. How many other people like me have been taken advantage of with expired COVID test kits and they've made it too difficult to get your money back? And what does that make me do? We went and Katie got some from like Rite Aid. And now I'm never going to try to order something like that off of Amazon again. So because they've replaced a human with AI chatbot, they have now lost me for that portion of, of, of sales. And then the more that those happen, the more often I'm just going to, you know what? I don't buy there anymore. So I think they're going down the wrong path on that because I perfectly legitimate reason why you would want your money back. They're expired. This is a medical thing. Yeah. Is Peru safe from a safety perspective? Would you take my wife? Yes. Do I prefer August or January? I've never done a January trip, so I could only prefer August, I guess. Uh, would I take my wife? 100% yes. I, the only time, and I didn't even, I've never, I don't think I've ever felt unsafe. The only time I was a little uneasy because they were like telling me to be uneasy was when we went to the like the wet markets and that kind of stuff. And we had to have bodyguards, but I didn't feel unsafe there. They were just worried that with all our camera equipment, someone might just grab and run, but never felt unsafe. And, and but I've been there several times and the culture is lovely. The people are so nice They're you know, and, and same with them when I'm in China and these other countries. It's weird. It's weird to see kids at the playground playing and like life is fine and good. We're like, that's not the way it is in America. And so oddly enough, in most of the places I travel, I feel more safe away from home than at home, which is bizarre. Not that I don't feel safe here, but it definitely is very, uh, you know, I, I would say the people are 
warm, open, and welcoming. And uh, like the Friday nights where we were staying, there'd be a big, like, I guess, town party in the, the middle of the town. And there'd be people like, oh, would you like this baked good that I made? Oh, you want this drink? You want this? Like, not even alcohol, just like drink. So everybody, it, it feels like it's a big block party potluck every Friday night. And they're so welcoming. They're like, hey, you need to try this. I know you haven't eaten this. Try it. They're like, oh, my gosh. I don't speak that language, but mm, really good. So I would say, yeah, I, I, I like it. Kyle Hernandez, what's up, buddy? You can't overfeed a fish, but you can overfeed a tank. You can technically overfeed a fish, too. You can feed a guppy so much their chest will open up and explode. That happens when you're trying to to raise like a championship guppy. And it's also a term they call, if you feed them too much too fast, uh, they call it the male guppies are getting chesty. And it's not a desirable trait. Like it, it develops too much because you're trying to get the biggest guppy you can that looks the best and uh, not so good. Aquarium Quap Flamethrower. I... I don't think my product liability insurance covers product fl or flamethrowers. Uh-oh. That's a loaded question. How do you how often do you deal with troublesome customers with little to no common sense and an entitled attitude? Here's what I would tell or what I like to tell customer service people is there's always going to be people we feel are being irrational. And if it really gets to a point, we'll fire a customer. We'll give, them all, give you all your money back and say, hey, you need to shop somewhere else. But on average, it's a misunderstanding. And there's a lot that can be lost between emails, pictures, video, or they listen in a live stream and you mishear me, or information does change, or any of that. And so we try to have the customer's always right attitude for as long as possible. And really try to give them the benefit of the doubt. And one of the examples I use with our customer service all the time, we had a person that we shipped them a light. It was a flu ball light. And it got stolen off their porch. So we shipped another one. Even though we got confirmation it was delivered. And it got stolen off their porch. So we shipped another one. And they didn't claim that one. Now, lots of employees are very upset. There's like, there's no way all of these are getting stolen. And I go, I agree. I think it's a very low chance that they've actually gotten stolen. But if I was the customer and they had actually gotten stolen, I would now be the co-op's best customer ever because they took care of me. In the event that they're a bad actor, we've also took notes and flagged their account. So this can never happen again with them. We will know, hey, this is not normal. And when we have to fire them as a customer, we're not going to say that they're stealing from us. We're going to say, Unfortunately, too many things are stolen off of your porch and we're losing way too much money. We can't serve you anymore as a customer. We wish we could. <coughs> and that's how that goes. <clears throat> it's really easy when people, you know, get racist or uh, just start hurling insults at the employees. So then we just, we give them their money back and we fire them. And, you know, it, people... We've had people come back, we're like, but it's the only place I can get X, Y, and Z. And we go, we know, but you weren't nice. Uh, you weren't nice to our employees. Like a lot of people forget that it's a two-way street. I have money. I'd like to buy something. The company would like to sell me something. If I'm really not a nice person, they may not want to sell me anything anymore. It's not always just a monetary transaction. There's, there's more to business than just money. And so usually it's respect and money that goes hand in hand. Customers like that and businesses like that. And so when you, when one of the respect things is broken down, then the money thing usually breaks down too. I have a 60 gallon heavily planted with about 60 fish, 25 are rummy nose and one has ick. Should I dose the tank or try to get them out? Well, here's, here's where you're at, I think. If you got that one out, it could have already spread some ick, and you might have to treat anyway. If uh, you leave it in there, it could spread some ick, and you're going to have to treat it. 
I personally go with treating it. Now, that being said, I don't think you need to treat right away. My first thing whenever I see ick, my first response is, let's see if this gets better or worse over the next day or two. If it's getting better, don't do anything. If it's getting worse, then, you know, okay, now it's an ick outbreak. Let me treat it. Um, but I like to gain a little more information before I just snap react. <laughs> this is true. It's a true story, Corey. I've had doctors fire me. Only one, only one I regret, though. I mean, the reality is when two people don't get along, it usually doesn't make sense to force it to work. You're, you know, and with a doctor, like you want a doctor that likes you because they're more likely to help you. <clears throat> and that's just in the world. If, if two people like each other, there are more chance that a good outcome is going to happen. And businesses try their best to put their best people in front of customer service. And we try to attract the right customers. And hopefully, you know, you set expectations right. And all of that, that's the end goal. That's repeatable. Will I ever ship to Mexico? Maybe. There's a chance. Um, it. What does it depend on? It depends on depends on a lot of the carriers and what they're doing. There's, there's always so much change in um in the in the shipping world that any day we could be like yes or no <laughs> multi purchase customer we love the little stickers you send it really makes a warm feeling for my little girls well good i'm glad disabled customer question all right i've been trying to enter the monthly giveaway unsuccessfully yes i do belong and subscribe to the email list and newsletter. Um, well, I'm not sure what the question. I'm guessing the question is, how do I enter? You could definitely email customer service and present that I'm not able to do it. And then we might be able to enter you manly, manually. Or B, you might be able to help us identify where our system is broken somewhere. And then we can try to alleviate it. Now, that being said. There is going to be uh, an announcement going out that, well, as Candy's doing right now, June was the last one that we were giving out. Um, and it's mostly because we noticed that there was essentially no more interaction with the company based on that. And when I see us spending money somewhere with, with very little return, I go, okay, what if we took that same 500 and we gave away memberships, right? And so it's, it's still giving away money. But does it make more of an impact? So then we, we, we could look at that, right? Oh, it's not even going to let me do it. This is the part of the show where we watch me uh, look like I'm hip with the kids. I'm using the internet. Because I'm trying to work like seven pieces of tech at once to do a thing while I'm live. All I was trying to do was buy some memberships, but it won't let me do it from the back end, which you'd think... Let me spend some of my YouTube profits to give it away, but they don't let you do that. So I have to go and pretend that I'm you guys, and now I'm going to buy some memberships. So yeah, instead of, oh, hopefully it won't ask me for my, let's just do it. Boom. Don't ask me for my pin number. I don't know off the top of my head. There we go. So yeah, instead of doing that, we just bought some memberships. We're not, it's not that I'm afraid of giving the money away. It's I want to make sure it's effective. So, hopefully you'll win a membership, and you'll get some value out of it. It's going to spam for a little while, because we bought 50, so. Uh, let's see. You should send an, a confirmation email to let people know they've been entered. We could. Yep, yeah, but at this point, we're discontinuing it, so you probably won't. What to do if the source water has high nitrates? Then you're adding nitrates to a tank. Run a planted aquarium, let it eat up all your nitrates, and then do 10% water changes and it'll eat those nitrates for you. Easy peasy. Uh, let's see here. This might be the first time I ever bought a 50. I don't know if that was ever... No, was that an option or was it only 20 before? I feel like I bought five 20s before. But I've never, I don't think I've ever bought a 50. Someone in the chat will know better than I will. 
All right, we're in the last 30 minutes. You know what that means? We got 30 minutes left of the show. That means we've only got 25 minutes to vote, right? And what is that vote? That vote will be, do I get a haircut? We're going to do this weekly until either A, I have luscious locks and I'll never cut my hair again, or B, we, uh, the will of the people decides I need a haircut. My, my platform is so lagged from these memberships. All right, it's finally letting me start a poll. Whew. Whew. Uh-oh. It's a candy versus Dorkula battle. Candy says I bought 50 before. Katie says only 20 before. Do you believe your customer service or do you believe your wife? That's a dangerous spot to be. All right, here's the poll. Boom, doing it. Which plants should I order from you for my new five gallon Neocardinia shrimp tank? Oh, what's this? Let's see that. Okay, good. Uh, I would do, I really like crypts. And someone asked me earlier, what's my favorite crypt? And I like Crypt When Dead I Red a lot. A lot, a lot. I also like Crypt Lutea a lot. So, uh, fill it with Crips. It'll be easy. You won't have to trim it all the time. A lot of root tabs. I likes it. Add the option of coloring my hair too. Yeah, but then it's maybe like we we could we might be able to get into like maybe if it shows that a cut happens, maybe we'll choose what type or color or something. You know, we'll see how it goes. By the way, if you just got one of those new memberships or you're thinking about joining, there's lots of membership only videos where we hired speakers who are good at their profession or their specialty, whether it's breeding Corydoras or killifish or knife fish or know, their aquatic vet or, you know, all that kind of stuff. That's all in a catalog you can, you can watch. So, you know, make sure you do while you got your free month. And then if you like it, if you like it, maybe you consider staying a member. Do I have overnight shipping or plans to implement it? Uh, I have considered implementing it. Right now, we don't have the space. We would need to set up another um, like priority shipping station. And we're just out of space at the warehouse. So... If we get a bigger warehouse, we could implement it. And then my here's my fear, the overpromise under deliver. My my fear is that you'll pay a big amount of money for overnight shipping. We'll get it out the door wicked quick because we always do. But then there's going to be a delay by USPS or another carrier, and we will look bad. Because what, what will happen, because I've seen it happen in the past, I paid for overnight shipping. I'm so angry. I needed that medicine yesterday. My fish are all dying. You're horrible people. And where if we don't offer that option, you still won't get the med that quick. But we don't get the you're horrible people for something we can't control. So if we if we do some testing, we always like to test, and we feel like it's pretty reliable and there's under 5% of the time it won't get the overnight, we could implement it. But right now, strategically, being in the corner, the overnight thing only makes sense if you're close to us. If you're far away, there's no way it's going to make it to you overnight. So. Likelihood of larger volumes of easy green being added to the co-op site? Slim. We used to sell it up to a gallon, then it was two liters. It ends up just being we're unintentionally... Um, basically fertilizing people's mail because it gets dropped off the back of the truck, you know, Ace Ventura kicked onto the, onto the roof and they just break no matter how much we've tried, like six different caps. We've tried bubble wrapping it. We've tried taping it. We've tried a bunch of things and, uh, none of them work. So we haven't found the secret yet. And a lot of people say, oh, other people are selling them. And I go, yep. 
and how many of those people are tracking it. And there's a big difference when you're like, well, you sold three gallons last month. It's like, oh, we sold 3,000 gallons last month. Like a lot of people would want it. So right now we only offer the bigger size to our retail partner stores, but we ship it in a certain way that's not profitable. And the RPP stores, they pay the shipping. So, yeah. Corey's hypothetical customer customer voice. I, I can't think of what it is, but I do know I make voices all the time. To tell you the truth, a mustache. Katie... Katie hates it when I wear a mustache. Like if I grow a beard and then I cut it down to something, she well, it's, it loves and hates. Like it's, I think the correct term from Katie is creepy. It's so creepy. You look weird with a mustache. And it's true. I, I basically do. So it's not even wrong. Is it normal to have some sort of tiny bugs in a planted aquarium? I'd say it's fairly, you know, you can get little aphids or little bugs like between the lid and the, the thing. I've, I definitely have seen that and I don't really worry about it. Do we grow all of our own plants or do you get them from farms and just convert them? I would say it's more the latter. We buy out several farms that can't keep up, which is unfortunate. And then we convert as much as we can, but based on sales, sometimes it's not nearly as much. So at the beginning of Aquarium Co-op, lots of conversion. Now, we can sell like mm, roughly 800 pogo stemmons to a lot of octopus a week, and we can only buy 400. So we don't get a lot of conversion time, and we've flown out to the farm several times. They all say they're going to make more, but we're five years into it, and nobody's making any more. And if we, act, if we had one of them just said, finally, they just said, we're just not going to be able to. And we're like, yeah, we, 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 we know. It's kind of like, you know, someone calls in like, I'm not going to make it into work. Like, yeah, we fired you two weeks ago. You haven't been here in six months. Like, it's, it's obvious. Like, yeah, we, we get it. It's been five years. You haven't made a single extra pogo. We, we realize you're not making more. Uh, let's see here. Do I think it's a good idea to put a pond? Wait. Do you think it's a good idea to put pond life? Ah, i.e. scuds and microfauna to introduce a natural cycle into 180 liter nano. Uh, yeah. There's so many, like, you could introduce so many parasites and bugs, but I'm a strong believer in, for as good as we think we are as humans, I honestly just think nature is better most times. So, do I think I would enjoy an aquarium more? Let me get my hair going here. Do I think I would enjoy an aquarium more with scuds and other stuff from my pond? Yes. Do I think it's superior? I don't know about superior, but I do think I would like it. I would enjoy it. There we go. We're getting a little bit of a little hair action. Sometimes you've got to make it bigger, you know, get that big hair going. If you just got a membership, make sure you sync your membership to the store and you spit on yourself on camera. You get 5% discount before you make a purchase. Yeah. So if you sync up your thing, that's another benefit you get. There's probably like other benefits. I'm just the worst salesman. And my big here's my big sales pitch. If you believe in me, it's worth spending five bucks. If you think I'm just some crackpot, don't spend any money. But... I actively work every day to try and bury you with more value than your money. Some people, they'll come in here and be like, this guy is a fool and he is fleecing all of you. Then there's other people that have been around for a long time, many, many years, and they know, they've seen, I will always try my hardest. And just because I try my hardest doesn't mean I do it a good job. I can be terrible at times. I'm overworked, I'm busy, I'm cranky, but then other times, I'm pretty good. And on average, I think it, well, it's shown out that thousands of people think it's worth staying a part of it than not. So, hey, can't be doing too bad. Corey's going to have to start styling his hair now. Nope. I haven't used, like, gel in my hair since I was, like, 14. I, I, I learned there's things to focus on, and uh, putting gel in my hair is not one of them. Get a haircut so I don't have to use gel. And uh, focus on other stuff. What is my take on people who take fish out of their aquarium and put them in their hand and take a picture? Is this unnecessary stress? Is it unnecessary stress? Yes. 
Do I judge them for it? Nope. Like, there's probably a million things in real life that we do all the time that other people are judging us for. Like, I'm sure mechanics are probably pissed that we do something with our cars. There's, like, it's just because we feel like, this is what I feel personally, I feel like we judge others knowing you shouldn't do that, and therefore I'm going to judge you for doing that. But when you get the whole story or, uh, you know, the full picture, it's like, okay, that's well, not that bad. Like, okay, well, it's in my picture because I had to sell it. Or it was, I was trying to teach someone about this fish. Or, um, yeah. My only criticism is your support of China, my support of China so heavily. Well, I, uh, I won't stop that. You know, I, I don't support China as a whole, but I support the partners I work with and the people I work with. And, you know, I, I definitely have had lots of long conversations with people. And uh, in my opinion, they have a very strong view of things after having never been there. I'm sure there's people that have been there that have a strong opinion that oppose mine too. And that that would be its own conversation. But, um, you know, as I've always said, Give me all the manufacturers I could use in America in my backyard where I could save a ton of money and I would do it in a heartbeat. But you take those options away, which they're not currently available, and I got to make it somewhere. So, and in my opinion, I have not seen what the media portrays to us. And so I just always, I've always spoken about my experiences, whether I'm in Israel, whether I'm in the Amazon whether it's an aquarium product, whether it's a Taco Bell hot dog, that's right, Taco Bell hot dogs, I give you, here's what I've experienced. Not what I've heard, not what I've read, not what other people tell me. I go, here's what I saw. That doesn't mean that other things aren't going on. Around the corner, crazy good stuff could be going on. But I didn't see it. And so I don't want to, uh, you know, I don't want to, I try, I try very hard not to talk out of turn where, if I don't see it, how do I know? A lot of people take the stance of, oh, but you know. And it's like, but do you? My whole career is built off of second guessing everything and finding out all the truths that are told as truths. In my experience, don't work out to be truths. Like time and time again, I go, huh, everybody thought this. Hmm, that's not what I'm finding. That's weird. I want my co-op lights made in America and $400. Dang it. Well, you'll just have to wait because next year they'll be made in Thailand and they'll still be the, well, yeah, they'll still be the same price. And so that's what I wonder about people that will bring up uh, those types of things. Do you feel differently about a light being made in Thailand even though it's the same manufacturer and the same parent company? What about if it was made in America but owned by them? Like, if there's all these weird layers to it of like, well, I'm, I'm not really actually sure how I feel about that yet. Like, yeah, it's it's a weird landscape we're in. A lot of stuff that is made outside of China is owned by China because the tariffs just made everybody build a factory outside of China. Does that actually change anything? I don't know. I don't know. I don't haven't been there. Don't know. Can't really speak to it. Questions I don't have answers to. There are people that will pay more for a USA made, by the way. I see some people like, oh, I don't think people like, no, we, we've established that, that, you know, I'm willing to pay $20 for a cup of lemonade that's lukewarm to the kid across the street. There are, there's demographics and, and buyers for everything. So, right. There are people and they're all markets, but you know, every, everyone's got to make their way in the world. Mm. High pH, maybe that's what's killing my snails. That'd be real high, I think. Usually pH being high is good. Taco Bell hot dogs. That's right. That's why they won't let me open up a Taco Bell franchise. I got all these ideas and they don't like them. I've got a pea puffer that's gotten very skinny. I've dewormed it twice with Expel P. And I know it gets lots of food. 
it's super active and behaves healthy, are some puffers just skinny? It can take a while to build some uh, some body weight on them, but maybe consider, and I, I don't know more of the story, maybe consider maybe more you know blood worms or something that's fattier. Um, also make sure that you did your, your uh, deworming correctly. And what I mean by that is usually you deworm, you wait a couple of weeks, you deworm again, and then also know that um, Expel P will treat, let's say it treats like 33% of internal tapeworm. And then Paracleanse treats like 50% of them. Well, even there, you've only covered like 88%. So there's still like, oh, there could be other ones. So you might you might find some value in treating with some Paracleanse and going, oh, that did the trick. Or maybe you got them all with Expel P and we just need more time and maybe some more fatty foods. It's hard to know. You, it's a lot of those times... It's like when you go to a doctor, right? They're like, well, we're going to try this. Let me know in two months how it's going, and then we'll try another thing if that doesn't work. Same thing with fish, really. I trust Corey to be a good judge of character when it comes to making ethical partnerships. Well, thank you. I definitely, you know, I, I've i even showed you video from the factories. I go to the factories I see, and if I saw something that I wasn't okay with, we would switch manufacturers or change something. Now, for all you guys know, maybe I just, I think horrible conditions are great. But from the way I have my employees and stuff, I don't think that people would think that. And, uh, you know, I, I'm sure there will be a day, because this happens in a lot of companies, where something's going on we don't know about, or uh, something changes or something like that, and it turns out like, did you know X, Y, and Z is going on at this factory that's making these mugs? And the reality will be like, no, I was there two years ago. How would I know that? And, you know, we like to live in ideals of thinking like, well, we should know what everybody's doing all the time. And it's like, but we don't. And I can try my best. I can always assure people I can try my best. That's what I will do. And if I learn that information, then I'll make a decision. Go, hey, we can't do that. But until that happens, you let it ride. Nothing beats Wiener Central hot dogs, except for the mini corn dogs. Things are grease laden. Super good and bad for you. I haven't had, I haven't had Wiener Central in probably 10 years. You know who ate a lot of Wiener Central? I probably went 20 years without eating Wiener Central. And when Jimmy lived with me, that dude would hit Wiener Central like dang near once a week. That dude lives for some corn dogs. Jimmy is the only person I've ever known in my personal circle. And this is a compliment, by the way. I love Jimmy. He's the only guy with enough dedication in his life. He would go to two to three different fast food lines for lunch. I literally have seen him like, dude, I need some nuggets from Wendy's, some spicy nuggets. Then I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit Wiener Central for a chili cheese hot dog and a corn dog. And then he'll hit, like, I, I want to say it was like Jack in the Box for the fries. I, my, my brain would never let me do that going, this is so inefficient. Ain't nobody got time for that. But he'd come back all proud and like, he's like, I made the perfect meal. And I can't, can't really argue with that. But it makes it incredibly difficult when you live with that person. Like, what do you want? And it's like, where are you going? Oh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to hit up Wendy's, Wiener Snitchell, and Jack in the Box. And you're just like, all of them? Uh, it's like, it makes choosing way more difficult. But, uh, yeah, he did make the perfect meals, I got to say. I love the neon nature sign. Would love that in my fish room. Yeah. I'm going to put some more signs up, I think. I kind of want to get, like, we've got uh, signs for the retail stores. Uh, one's, like, Easy Green is sold here. And another one is Live Aquarium Plants. I think we might have another one, too. Aquarium Co-op partner and i just i kind of love neon signs and uh so i'm thinking about hanging some more up back there because i i don't know i whenever i see them in my own store i'm like that thing is sweet and then i think about like hey we make those i should just have one of those like that's that's just something i should have like i've always lusted after those types of of signs and stuff because back in my day when i started you'd have to spend so much money to get one of those from like aquion that now 
in my opinion, I feel like we're kind of giving away a lot because I, in my opinion, if someone hangs up in their store, they're advertising us, which that's a good thing. I mean, the live aquarium plants one, that doesn't advertise us, but you know. I've been watching your fish room tour, the guppy algae farm one. Would you let any tanks in your current fish room get that desert? Heck yeah. I love me algae. I love algae. It's so good for the fish. Like if I've got a colony of fish or shrimp or something thriving, I love that. And I'm willing to take the beating online. Like why do your tanks look so bad? You'd think if you're in it for 20 years, you wouldn't suck so much. And I just go, "Uh uh-huh, uh-huh. But, you know, and then I go like, yeah, but uh, where's your turtles breeding? Or where's this or that or this or that or this? Some of it is got to let nature just do nature's thing. You can fight it all day long and go, why aren't I getting the results? Sometimes you just got to let nature do its thing, even though you look dumb letting it do it. And then you go, oh, that's the result I was looking for. I can never get before. All right. Neon's beautiful. Real neon's also a dying art. Yeah, I don't have, I think I have maybe one real neon sign. These are all LED and they're so much cheaper that, you know, it's like one tenth the cost. So I, I just buy the LED versions. But I really love, I love even the sound of neon. I love neon. Easy Green does get expensive with 20 planet tanks, eight of which are CO2 injected. I agree. But then I also, I also like bring people back to reality. What is 20 of anything in the world that's not kind of expensive? Like it's, it's kind of one of those, it's like, you are running tw- 20 planet aquariums. Like that ain't nothing. So, you know, there's going to be some cost to it, but yeah, maybe we'll, let me, hold on. Uh, shoot me an email. If you have my email, Steven, shoot me an email or shoot me a, a, a message on Messenger. I think you have it. Have you ever tried Pogo, st- wait, have you ever tried an all Pogo stem and Stellatus jungle tank similar to using Val? Kind of. I let it fill like the ponds and stuff, but I don't clip it and plant it a ton because I'm just too lazy. So I will let it fill a whole tank and let them breed, but I don't sit there and like plant it every inch for that look. How do you fatten up small new pea puffers? I like frozen blood worms soaking in Vitacam. That's my go-to. How about a neon Tetra neon sign? I have that. I know you're new, John, but uh, I literally own a neon, neon Tetra sign. It's just in the other studio. But I'm thinking about getting that up here, too. I, like, I miss I miss having my neon lights. I don't even have all my lights on correctly. Hold on. Let me let me fix the ambiance. The ambiance. There's one. And see how it brings that more, my actual tone of skin in, like the little bit warmer tone instead of, or, or as I should call it, the aquarium co-op tone because our lights are too yellow. I like it to be like what sun looks like and not so much because all the light coming in through the window, it's filtered, right? So even though the sunlight is warmer and orange, the shades are filtering light. And we're getting that blue light. And we've just people have been doing that for so many years in aquariums. They don't realize what nature should look like anymore. Not that who am I to tell people what they want to look at, but that's not what my eyes see when I'm in nature looking at my pond or in Peru or any of that, I get a nice like orangey yellow uh, glow on tannin water. I got to spell it. All right. Uh, we're talking about the uh, Vitacamp. We saw it on our website. You can probably get it on Amazon too. It's just a uh, vitamin soak for foods, whether it's dry, frozen, all that kind of stuff. I want that beta neon sign. I got it. They probably still make it on eBay. Let me see if I can pull it up on eBay for you guys. Neon Tetra. Oh, hold on. Neon Tetra bitch sign. Let's see if I can get that. Mm, no, that came that came up with Halloween catnip toys and 16-inch mermaid skeleton. <laughs> All right. Uh, neon Tetra sign. 
Mm, now it's trying to sell me live neon tetras. Ooh, by the way, I haven't shown you guys a video out of my fish room in like forever, but I have long fin neon tetras and they're kind of dope. They're pretty cool. They look messed up, but they're kind of cool. You definitely look at them and you go, that's not, that can't be, that can't be a uh, aerodynamic, but they look weird and I've wanted them so long. Yeah, I'm not seeing them on, on eBay anymore. Let's try Amazon. Neon Tetra sign. Not seeing it. Oh, wait. Nope, that's a shark. Well, I'll have you know, I now have a neon, neon Tetra sign for sale for only $6,000. Does it expire? Are we talking about uh, Vitakim? I'm sure it does, but you should use it up much before you run to that problem. Any advice for breeding rice fish more effectively? I think lower temperatures increases yield. And then also removing babies from the top of the water every day. Um, but those are what we've observed so far. I just ordered a light. Uh-oh. I was going to get a cheaper one, and then you mentioned all the benefits of the co-op light. You sold me. Well, Sherry, if you don't like it, return it and leave a review. Well, leave a review either way, but, uh, you know, all I can tell you is I tried my hardest to make a light that I think will live up to what I think an amazing light is. And you will be the judge of that. You'll go, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about, or, yep, he likes it, and I like it. Are there any companies in Canada that sell the co-op products? Yes, there is. April's Aquarium. They have two stores in Vancouver, Washington, but they also ship all throughout Canada. So, you know, for a lot of the places where you're like, can we get it here yet? We're hoping we can find a good partner that will do that same type of thing in Mexico, in the UK, and some of the European countries. So... We're just waiting for the, we don't want to force it. We want to see, uh, you know, we want to see natural kind of partnerships progress. How is, how is, how was it traveling with Chris Lukup? Uh, Chris Lukup and I have this weird connection. Well, I'm going to say it's that. He might tell you like, this guy thinks he's my friend, but we have this weird, I'm going to call it. I don't know what to call it, but we don't have to be on for each other. What does that mean? That means like you can be honest. You're like, man, I am too lazy to uh, go do that thing today. And he's like, yeah, me too. Or you, you want to eat? Like, no, nah, I'm not even hungry. Yeah, me either. You want to eat this? Yeah, sounds good. Um, and so even though he'll host me and I've hosted him, it doesn't feel like you've got someone in your home or you're in town. And so we've got this weird, like, and we both like filming and working hard where most times when he takes someone, he's like, most people bow out after a few hours where at hour 14, we're like, let's go to the next place. And we actually work in tandem really well together and we just have a good time and we can chat and, uh, you know, respect each other. So it's very fun to travel with him. And that's what I was going to go do in Europe for three weeks with him. But I really got to focus on just business in general. And he, he gets that and he's like, Hey, there's always more time and, uh, you know, the universe will work out. And, you know, so I told him, Hey, you come here, like you come see me, you can hang out with me for three weeks. And he does want to do that. Cause he's got to get some more stuff, a couple more crayfish. I think one's out of Alabama and one out of another place and you can borrow my car and we can go do it and that kind of stuff. I was visiting the Washington, wait, I was visiting Washington for a vacation a few weeks ago and made sure to visit the aquarium co-op while I was there. It's an amazing shop, and the fish are so cheap compared to here in Pennsylvania. I feel like our fish are way overpriced, if I'm being honest, because it just, from 20 years of keeping fish, it's like, this fish has never been this expensive. It's crazy. And, uh, you know, people keep buying our lights, and we have good quality and everything. And, and you know, we look at the whole thing, oh, man, the price are really going up. Like, that's, and I do believe that, um, Fish are worth way more than what they currently cost in the market today, but it still doesn't make it make it easier to go. Wow, those are up to that much. Woo, getting crazy. I got my light from my local fish store listed on your website. Heck yeah! If 
I need to file a warranty, would I contact the local fish store or co-op? You could do either, but your local fish store should be the easiest. So imagine your light breaks tomorrow for some reason. You could walk it to the local fish store. They should pull one off the shelf and hand it to you. They will then email us and we will credit them the full amount of that or put another one on their next order. Either way, so they should be out nothing. It's, you know, it's unfortunate that for everybody. It's unfortunate that you had to be inconvenienced. So you have to get another one. It's inconvenient for the store. It's inconvenient for us. Like we lost money. But that happens so few and far between that that's what good customer service is. So, or if you go, hey, you know, it's 50 minutes and I don't have time to drive there. You can email us and we're going to go, hey, take a picture of it. And we're probably going to make it right. Technically, in enough time, in a few years, there's going to be like an underground, you know, uh, counterfeit aquarium co-op ring or something where it's like, I bought this at a club auction and it was already known to not be working, but I know I can ask them for another one and I could probably beg them even though I don't have a receipt that it's under the two-year warranty. And the reality is like, we'll probably let bad people take advantage of us to make sure that we go above and beyond for all the trustworthy people. Like that's the reality. And so if that's the cost of doing business, that's what I chalk it up to. Like, well, yeah, there's gonna always gonna be bad actors, but we shouldn't punish the people that are doing good business with us because of that. And so, you know, it, and I don't hold all the stores to that. So if you get one randomly and you don't have a receipt, the store could tell you, nope, you got to take that up with Aquarium Co-op. We're not putting that kind of, uh, we're not putting that kind of stress on the local store. We're willing to take that beating because we sell so many of them and we can, you know, and we're watching the numbers, but, you know, we don't expect a local little mom and pop store like I was 10 years ago to absorb that. That's not, that's not fair. You're so late, but you're acclimating Julie Corey's. Well, it ain't that bad. Then. I just bought a second aquarium co-op light, largest one available for my brand new 75 gallon. Well, thank you very much. Chris Lukup just discovered the coolest snail, the blueberry snail. I really wish you could find these in the States. What does it take to get these imported? Well, usually it's not that bad. You just have to have a species name and you got to go through some hoops and you can get it. The problem we find is supply. So in Europe, when they go find a snail, and let's say they find like, oh, we got a thousand of these and that lasts them for a month. A thousand, if we brought a blueberry snail in, a thousand would last us probably 24 to 36 hours. And so that's the problem to import is all the costs. And so we would need to be like, okay, well, we need 20,000 of these to bring in to make it make any sense. And they might go, yeah, but there's not, we can't collect 20,000 of them. And so that's where you get these like, oh, well, then we need someone to breed it. And that takes a long time to get it to uh, a breeding status on a lot of this stuff. Uh, let's see here. I'm gonna be going any minutes as date nights, but I'm I'm trying to trying to wrap her up. <laughs> My hair's looking good, Dorky. Do you like it? I think Katie is in the camp of he's basically seen me with this kind of a haircut forever, and so this is what my hair looked like when we were opening the store because well, and when I worked at a fish store because Katie would cut my hair. And what we would do is we would just buzz it all the way down and then it would grow. And then we weren't on like a schedule like I am with my barber. And so it would get this long like, oh my gosh, we got to cut my hair. But, you know, they'll be like, oh, we got to do this and this and this and this and this. Like we won't get to it till next Tuesday. And so, but she's never, she's seen pictures, but never, uh, never like super long hair. Like I haven't had super long hair since I was like 10 or 12 or something. So. Even I don't even know what it feels like anymore. It's all of like this hair that's driving me nuts. This is a little wonky too. All the hair around the ears from like headphones. Like it's a little. It's, it's not my jam. All right. Oh, God. I can't even. Like I got to fix it. I can't even sit there like that. I also look better with the beard. Yeah. The problem with the beard is it, it's a little bit itchy. I don't like it when I'm wearing like the co-op hoodie. 
And every once in a while, you're like, you'll look down at something, you rip a beard hair out, like, ow! And maybe I'm just a baby, but, uh, you know, there, there's pros and cons. It keeps your face warmer, you know. Although, I do get I do get dog hair in it. There's that I'm not thrilled about, so. I have to share pictures. There's probably pictures. If you go way back on the community post, there's pictures from a long time ago. Uh, yeah, all right, I'm wrap, wrapping it up. Wrap, wrap, wrap it up. It's getting hot, sweaty. What's the armpit check? Yep, look at that. Oh, oh. There's AC. It's a nice, cool 73 downstairs. I need to get a thermometer up here, but it's probably like 80 up here. So it's better. It would have been 110 up here without the AC and the fan, but it's still still no, no gravy train up here. Still... But that being said, even in the midst of winter, something about being live, maybe it's my brain's working so hard that it elevates my temperature. But, uh, yeah, so. Mull it. I'll mull it over. What do you think about that? All right. I'm heading out. Got to do dinner. What else? Got to unload a cargo container this week. I got to do the plant runs. I got a busy week lined up. That's what I know. This is the most downtime I'm going to have. So compliment somebody. I've been working on that myself more and more. It makes me feel good. You'll make somebody else feel good. And uh, I'll see you next Wednesday. I've scheduled them out. So you could go to our thing right now. And you could set a reminder for like the next three or four of them. And that way you won't miss it. Because if you don't show up, I'm not doing it. But you keep showing up, so I'm doing it. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Got to find the button. Never ready. Oh, all right. Have a good night. We'll see you. Wait, I didn't actually hit the, I hit the end button, but I didn't hit the end end button yet. Just so we're clear, 61% said, no way, let it grow another week. So there's no haircut this week. Okay. I got to I got to extend it longer. I actually got to, I got to end that poll. I got to make it official. Phew, it's official. Okay, no haircut. I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.